In this video, we're gonna go over the basics of kennel training. Now, kennel is what we call a short-term confinement area. It really should be only used uh, for no longer than four hours unless a puppy is sleeping there. And that goes for adult dogs too. If a dog is in a kennel for longer than four hours, it will release cortisol into their blood, and that's the stress hormone. We're gonna our buddy Ollie here who just said that he's ready to get on camera. Uh, we're gonna start this off real quick, but a couple of little tips about the kennel. You never ever want your puppy or your adult dog to be barking or whining or crying in the kennel. That's gonna help them practice being stressed in the kennel. And that's gonna eventually cause your puppy to not want to be in the kennel or your adult dog. And I have had hundreds of clients that tell me, David, you're wrong. My dog loves the kennel. I leave him in there for six or eight hours every day, he's fine. And after a couple months, I get a phone call. David, remember when I said that my dog loved the kennel? It broke a couple teeth out trying to get out. I know of dogs that actually have tried to force their way out and gotten their neck caught and ended up getting uh, expiring as a result of it. So it is a serious thing. Even if, you don't, even if you're using a long-term confinement area, which is one of the things that we like to use, and we're gonna talk about in puppy class quite a bit, we still want your puppy to have the skills to go into a kennel. If your dog goes to a vet, if it goes into a, a groomer situation or a boarding situation, they are gonna to need to be kennel trained. And if your puppy, if you follow these steps, your puppy is gonna not only enjoy going in the kennel, but it's gonna be a nice resource that you can use at times for potty training and other opportunities where you need to uh, safeguard your puppy. All right, so when we're gonna do this, we're and do this 100% positive reinforcement. There's no forcing. You should never force your puppy to go or your adult dog to be in the kennel. You should never use that as a punishment zone. And if you have little kids, the kennel should always be a safe place for the puppy that the kids are not allowed to interact with. That means they cannot reach their hands in there, their fingers through the side. They can't to try to go over and tease and talk to the puppy. When the puppy's in there, that's essentially its room or adult dog. Giving a puppy or an adult dog a safe place to go is tremendously helpful. Um, it really helps the puppy feel a lot more confident and it will reduce greatly your chances of your children being nipped or bitten. Um, let me see, also, uh, as you see in the background here, I prefer a wire kennel. Um, you can use a plastic kennel. The wire kennels fold down quite a bit easier. The plastic kennels also, because they are plastic, some dogs do learn to chew, and I've had seen dogs chew their way out of those. Also, um, uh, in terms of just moving them around and storing them, again, it's a lot of space. So if you do have an opportunity to get a wire kennel, that's what I would recommend. Um, and they have a little cover so that you can simulate if your dog, sometimes if a dog barks a lot in the kennels because it's distracted by what's going around them, uh, we would recommend you put your kennel in a place where it's a low, sti uh, low stimulus uh, environment. It should never be in an unfinished basement, like a furnace room or things like that. For dogs, the worst punishment is really to be excluded from the group. So you don't want it in your living room, but you don't want an unfinished basement. So somewhere in between. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our buddy Ollie here. And first thing, first step, the first step is we are going to make sure that the dog wants to go into the kennel. Now I have some high value training treats here. And what we're gonna do, uh, before I actually mention this, one other tip. Um, I like coming up with fun names for kennels. Ollie here is a Dalmatian. I, I have an affinity for Dalmatians. I had a Dalmatian myself, his name is Quest and I'll go ahead and report that, of course. Um, and basically, uh, I called Quest Kennel Station, as in fire station. So other words that you might want to use are igloo, house, mansion, Hawaii, palace, Jamaica. Oops, sorry about that, buddy. And so if you use a funny name, it can be, it can be very helpful. I'm going to go over how you can introduce a cube towards the end of this video. First thing I want Ollie to do is want to go in the kennel. So I'm showing him I have a treat, and I'm dropping it in the kennel with the door closed. I'm going to do this with about five treats, and I'm taking care to drop these treats in different parts of the kennel. And what we're <laughs> trying to achieve is what we're seeing for Ollie. Make sure there are a couple here in the front as well, because we want Ollie to want to go into the kennel. And be careful, so you sometimes you can throw them through the side. So now that we know that our puppy wants to go in the kennel, we're ready to go ahead and let them go in. However, if your puppy is fearful, it's going to do this by, uh, it's going to lean and not want to go in the kennel. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we'll go ahead and get started for this part now. So I'm going to open the kennel. And I'm actually going to say station when he goes in there and then he gets to lick up the treats. Now, if your puppy hesitates to go in the kennel, it leans and won't actually step in the kennel. Sometimes the tray hitting the bottom of the kennel can be, dis uh, the sound can be discouraging. So sometimes I'll put a light uh, hand towel underneath there to muffle that sound. Now, if your puppy will not go all the way in there as easily as he did, then what you want to do is do this. Remember Ollie? Ollie has very, uh, already been kennel trained. But you would just put a treat here. Let your puppy come and get it. And if it runs away, Repeat that, I promise you eventually your puppy will eventually start to go into the kennel. Then you're gonna put the treats right there in the front, and again, if they only lean, that's okay. Eventually you'll go back and forth, and the puppy will go in further and further. 
So the first stage, I guess I should break down, the first stage is with the kennel door closed, we're gonna drop about five or six treats, wait for the puppy to be interested. If the puppy is not interested, touch their nose with the treat, drop them in. If they're not done interested, go ahead and give them a higher value treat. That's a good sit. You're already on the third stage, I'm not ready for that yet. All right, so the second stage is, uh, is after we've opened the door, we're gonna help our puppy practice going in and out of the kennel, just like we are here. I'll leave. Come here, buddy. And lingering is really what we're looking for. All right, so what we want your puppy to go in is that easily. If there's any hesitation or stiffness, then your puppy is not ready. Don't go to the next stage until you've achieved this. So your puppy is now going in and out pretty much. The next stage is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give him a treat. And I'm gonna wait for him to finish chewing and I'm gonna give him another treat. And if he's sticking his head out, I might give him the treat a little bit to the side to kind of entice him to back up, but I don't wanna push. I'm gonna do that again. Or I could throw a treat behind him to get him to increase more distance. And what we're looking for a puppy to do is stay in the kennel, completely relaxed. You see uh, Ollie's body is not tense, um, he's not hunched over, he's not quivering, he's not trying to run back out. And if he wants to come out, let him. Then you just practice going in and out, in and out until they're very comfortable. Once he comes out, immediately throw a treat right back in there. So this uh, second stage is going in and out until they have no hesitation. The third stage is what I'm doing now, where we're gonna to try to uh, have him stay in there. Now first, as you see, I'm giving these treats pretty quickly, but eventually I wanna give the treat a little bit slower. I wanna increase the duration of time between the treats, so we're increasing the time that he's in the kennel, but what is he doing? He's in the kennel and he's completely calm, and that's the goal of the situation. If he wants to step out like that, I can go like this, drop another treat behind him, boom. So uh, again, completely force-free. The third stage, and don't do the third stage until your puppy is completely relaxed. If it sits or lays down in there, that's a good indication you're ready for, to go for the third stage. So next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm, well, I wanna make sure he's all the way in. Don't do it when he's in the front of the kennel. So, uh, and, and so I'm gonna close it a little bit, and I'm gonna give him a treat. Don't close it all the way, don't get greedy, but close it a little bit more, and then get a treat. We want the movement to precede the reward. And if he comes out, just throw a treat right back in there, wait for him to go back in, just say station or whatever your word is. All right, very good. He didn't cover that one, that's all right, I'll do it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close it a little bit more. Treat. Close it a little bit more. Treat, and you're gonna be tempted to go ahead and pop it closed, don't. You might wanna hold a couple treats in your hand for this one. So if, you're, if you close the door, your puppy starts whining or pawing at it, then back up the stage. Always back up the step if your puppy's uncomfortable. He literally bites up step, but he, I can tell that his body language is nice and calm and comfortable. So I'm closing it, but what am I not doing? I'm not latching it. I'm just keeping it closed, and I'm gonna feed him treats through here. I'm also gonna feed him treats to the side. Now, uh, Laura, one of our friends at the Dog Down Problems team, said to mention that they have all these little spokes at the top. This could be a good indicator of how far back your puppy goes in there. So um, eventually you hold the treat out a little bit further back, a little bit further back. I can also offer them through the top. If your puppy knows a cue uh, to sit, sit like Holly does, I can put him into a sit, but be careful. If your puppy does not want to sit, don't push the issue. That's an indication they're uncomfortable. So, uh, so again, I'm going to keep the door closed and just keep feeding the treats, and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start elongating the duration of time between giving the treats. And Ali, you can see his body is nice and relaxed, and that's what you want. Remember, this is not a rush. We want to just achieve your puppy enjoying being in the kennel. It's not how fast you can achieve it, it's the result of your puppy being relaxed the whole time. Um, another little tip that you can add if you're, uh, is you can take a bully uh, stick, drill a hole through the back of it, and take a zip tie, zip it to this part of the very back of the kennel. So that puppy goes in the kennel and gets to chew on this wonderful bully stick and they enjoy it. I'm sorry, Ollie, I was talking a little bit too much, wasn't I? Um, and they get to enjoy it, the door's open and they go to go in there whenever they want, they can't pull, pull the bully stick out, it's a nice positive reinforcement. All right, so now we're doing this, and if your puppy shows any sort of sign of stress, go ahead and invite him to come on out like this. Take a little bit of break, come back and practice again later. Now if your puppy goes in on its own, you should give your puppy like three, the first couple times you should give him what we call a jackpot, about five or six treats in a row, just let him know. That was the most amazing thing ever. And if you do this right, your puppy will go in there completely fine, uh, completely without any hesitation. All right, so now I'm gonna close it, and I'm gonna give him a treat for that stage. I'm gonna jiggle this and then I'm gonna give a treat. You saw he moved back a little bit, so that's an indication he's not super duper comfortable with that sound. So I'm gonna make the sound a little bit less. Always back up the step. So that's the sound of me closing the kennel door. And I wanted to be nice and comfortable with that. And now I have it actually latched. 
And when you relax it, at first, you're gonna probably need to feed these treats through pretty quickly like this, just to make sure he's enjoyed it. And you can also drop them like this. There's nothing wrong with that as well. You can sit. So I know Ollie is relaxed and comfortable and knows how to sit, so I'm comfortable doing that. But again, don't force it. If the puppy doesn't want to sit, that's okay. You'll get to it a couple stages later. And after a little, uh, don't be too greedy. After about you know, 10, 15 seconds, go ahead and open the kennel door. You might give him another treat like that. Invite him to come on out. Give your puppy a little bit of love. Oh, look at Ollie. He's like, I know where the kennel treats are. Go ahead and go on in there, buddy. There you go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close that again. I'm going to latch it this time without giving a treat first. I'm latching first and then giving a treat after. It's a, the first couple times it's okay to give a treat at the same time, but eventually you want to transition the sound or the motion or the action first. I'm sorry, Alan. And then the treat after. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Jiggle. And I don't really have to jiggle very much because he's already pretty comfortable. And then I have to give him a uh, treat. Jiggle again. Treat. I might drop a couple in the back. Just drop them one at a time. Uh, there we go. Oh, you missed one. Oh, I dropped it out, didn't I? There you go. Also, anytime your uh, your puppy gets a new toy, you should put it in the kennel. They should, that's where they should find it. Wait, wait for them to go outside, put the toy in the kennel, and that way every time they go in there, it's a fun, happy place. All right. We're going to go ahead and invite Ollie to come back out. And look at who's ready just to go back in there on his own. Now, if it does fall off the side like that, make sure you throw another treat right away. Uh, sometimes they'll go scratch at it. And eventually, let them go out and go get it if they know how to get it. But make sure you police that out. Now, one other little tip. Some dogs, uh, especially little dogs, have a problem with this little lip here in the front. So if that's the case, you might put a book or two here uh, to make it a little bit of an easy step for them to go in. Oh, and always reward that sit. Um, some people also put uh, a little bit of a towel over. Sometimes they knock their paws going over it. That can also be dis dis concerning. And I had one puppy that was actually so small, we had to put a couple books here and a couple books there. So it was a, more of a ramp when it goes went across. Um, most dogs really don't have a problem with that, and it's less the little puppies. Um, but yeah, that's about it, it in terms of the tips. Well, this is my buddy Ollie. We sit. It's like, maybe if you give me a treat. <laughs> what a cutie. This is Ollie, and these are some, uh, this is an easy way to use positive re reinforcement to kennel train your puppy. Ollie, you did such a good job, puppy. Yes, you did, puppy, puppy. Quest, you are a